Welcome back. We're getting a closer look at a huge section of reef that was reduced to rubble by a cruise ship anchor almost two weeks ago. The Department of Environment shot this video last week. It shows the nearly 12,000 square feet of destruction. The Carnival Magic's anchor and chain dragged along the sea floor on August 27th, tearing up a once pristine portion of the outer wall just off Don Foster's dive came on. The bulk of the damage occurs between 80 and 115 feet below the surface. It's a real shame because the reef around where the anchor's dropped is in really, really good condition and now it's not. <laughs> it ruined a whole stretch and so it wasn't just a localised area, it was a real big area that was ruined and potentially destroyed. The DOE is evaluating whether a criminal case is possible under the marine conservation law as it's illegal to damage coral with anchors or chains. The damage has been done and now the work to repair a reef destroyed by a cruise ship anchor is underway. More than 30 volunteer divers turned out on Saturday to move rubble and save what coral may still be alive. Cayman 27's Joe Avery shows us the first small steps of what is likely to be a marathon project. It's going to be hard dealing with anything uh, beyond the 70 foot mark. Volunteer divers are briefed by the Department of Environment before going to work on what used to be a healthy coral reef. When you get out there and you look down the side of the wall and it basically goes off into the distance as far as you can see underwater. For many, Saturday was the first glimpse of the damage inflicted by the Carnival Magic's anchor and chain. The hard part is um, just going to be clearing out the rubble, stabilizing the reef, and uh, making sure that we don't damage any more coral. Before large chunks of living coral like this one can be reattached to the sea floor, dead coral and sediment must be moved aside, a tedious process. Divers moving small crates of rubble from the damaged site to a sandy patch to the east of the work zone. Once the debris is clear, divers will affix coral to the substrate with marine epoxy. Slow and steady is key uh, with this sort of operation. If, if we just go in all gangbusters, uh, then it's, it's going to end up possibly causing more damage than we're solving. Rome wasn't built in a day, and this isn't going to be done in a day or 10 days or 20 days. It's going to be long term. The work, difficult and exhausting, but crate by crate, volunteers have hopes of saving centuries old corals and minimizing the scars of man. It's going to take a lot of coordination, but we can help get this reef back, not to what it was originally, but at least to a stable reef that can sustain life again. Joe Avery, K Man 27. Volunteer efforts continue through the week. If you'd like to get involved, check out the Cayman Magic Reef Recovery Facebook page. There's a link to it on our website at cayman27.ky. And stick around for 27 tonight. We'll have much more on the Coral Restoration Project. Three months since a cruise ship anchor ripped through our reef, the Department of Environment is counting the cost. Good evening, I'm Mona Lisa Tatum. Back in August, the Carnival Magic dropped anchor on Healthy Coral just south of Georgetown. Now the DOE says the incident caused anywhere from $1.5 million to $14 million in damages. Cayman 27's Joe Avery explains. It's not easy to put a price tag on nature. In August, the Carnival Magic dropped anchor directly on the coral reef, damaging nearly 16,000 square feet of Mother Nature's handiwork. But we have prepared a brief which details what the equivalent damage and the value of the damage might be if you were to apply the methods used in other jurisdictions. And as you can imagine, those figures are quite sizable. Tim Austin with the Department of Environment says that number is likely to be in the neighborhood of $1.5 million based on previous Cayman Islands court cases. Now you're talking about $1,000 per square meter of reef uh, when they, by the time the estimates are finished. And you know, when we here, we've got like 1,500 square meters uh, is a lot of a lot of damage. Other methodologies could value the damage as high as fourteen million dollars in guidelines set out in the Florida Coral Reef Protection Act. <laughs> DOE is overseeing a volunteer-led restoration effort aiming to salvage what can be saved of these precious corals. You know, in this day and age, we're all strapped for time. Time is such a huge commodity to all of us. Um, so to be able to volunteer your time is, is a you know huge thing in people's lives and. And, you know, there are people that are out here every weekend um, giving their time to the effort. 
So far, volunteer divers have logged more than 450 man hours of work on the restoration, moving an estimated 32,000 pounds of rubble away from the damaged site. Meanwhile, live corals are being separated from the rubble and stored in crates until they can be reattached to the seafloor when epoxy arrives. We need to finish the project and, you know, at this stage, that's the end goal is to get it, you know, to its final stage, which we know is going to take a long time. Sally Coppage of Don Foster says when the epoxy finally arrives, the restoration effort can shift focus onto reattaching salvaged coral to the reef. Joe Avery, KMAN 27. The DOE says they've had no contact with anyone in the cruise industry. They've passed their brief along to both the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Tourism. Cayman 27 reached out to representatives from Carnival Cruise Lines today for comment, but had not heard back before news time. We begin with our big story, the damages to damage caused to our reef by a cruise ship anchor. It was three months ago today that the Carnival Magic cruise ship damaged thousands of square feet of reef in our waters. As volunteers spend hours underwater trying to fix the damage, the Department of Environment have sent their findings to government. Cayman 27's Joe Avery has been one of the many divers involved in the repair process. He joins me now to discuss the issue. Good evening, Joe. Good evening. All right, so first of all, it's three months since the damage was done. What's the reef looking like now? Well, it could be a lot worse, but it is getting better. It's still kind of a hot mess down there, but we've made some uh, good progress, uh, moving 32,000 pounds of rubble uh, from the damage site to sandy patches just along the fingers of the reef there. Uh, we've logged 450 man hours of work from volunteers and we've built a staging area for coral right there that is secured into the ground so that in this weekend storm those live corals aren't going anywhere. All right, so now we learned that the damage to the reef could be, you know, as anywhere from like one to 14 million dollars. How is that figure actually determined? Well, the DOE has taken into account uh, historical precedents here on the island and also using guidelines from the Florida Coral Reef Protection Act, as well as information and data from the Florida Keys, uh, Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Now, they've assessed uh, the, the, the uh, Florida Coral Reef Protection Act levies fines of $1,000 per square meter of damaged coral with the ability to levy an additional $1,000 for aggravating circumstances and another $1,000 for uh, the reef being in a marine park. So they can do about $3,000 per square meter. Now, back in 2001, the Lady A damaged uh, about 130 square meters of reef off of Seven Mile Beach. And that captain was prosecuted and fined by the courts $150,000. When you break that damage down, it's about $1,100 per square meter. Now, if we use, if we use that math, mm -hmm. then this would be a $1.8 million valuation. Now, you mentioned that the captain in, the, in a previous accident was charged. What, what's happening you know, within our laws? What's going to happen here? Is anyone going to be prosecuted? Well, the, uh, the marine conservation law is out there, and it says damaging coral uh, by a vessel, its anchors, chain, appendages, uh, they can levy a fine of uh, a half million dollars for that. So they can sentence somebody to a year in jail and even confiscate their vessel. But in this instance, the prosecution under that law is going to be difficult, costly, and, and take a long amount of time. So it might make sense uh, to implore upon the corporate and social responsibility of the three principal parties, which are Carnival Cruise Lines, Bodden Shipping, and the Port Authority, to recoup something. Now, the DOE advises government that a financial contribution of about $2 million, at least $2 million, sends a clear message how much they place a value on our natural resources. All right, well, we'll see what happens. Thanks so much for covering this story and, and offering your help. We're taking a look back now at the top stories of 2014, and one of those is a massive cleanup that's underway. It's been nearly four months since the Carnival Magic cruise ship drop anchor on a pristine coral reef. Cayman 27's Joe Avery has followed the volunteer effort to salvage what living corals managed to survive. He brings us up to speed. On August 27th, the Carnival Magic, under the direction of a Baden shipping pilot, dropped anchor outside the designated anchorage zone. The anchor itself was massive and you could see the scar where it dug in and pulled right across the reef. It was, it was really sad to see actually. Staffers from nearby Don Foster's dive center swam out to investigate. Their video gave us a first glimpse at the destruction. It's a real shame because the reef around where the anchor's dropped is in really, really good condition and now it's not. <laughs> 
Divers from the Department of Environment followed up, assessing, mapping, and documenting the damage. It's going to be hard dealing with anything uh, beyond the 70-foot mark. In September, an army of volunteers started the laborious task of clearing rubble from the site. The hard part is um, just going to be clearing out the rubble, stabilizing the reef, and uh, making sure that we don't damage any more coral. Now the DOE has briefed the Ministry of Environment on the incident. They're calling it an unfortunate accident with responsibility falling on the shoulders of the Port Authority, Baden Shipping, and of course the Carnival Magic. Now the DOE says prosecution under the marine law would be difficult and costly. And as 2014 comes to a close, no one yet has been held accountable for the damage. This is probably the single biggest um, volunteer coral restoration effort that's ever been done. The volunteers are now shifting focus, reattaching live corals back onto the reef and moving large boulders away from the sheer drop off of the wall. And this isn't going to be done in a day or 10 days or 20 days. It's going to be long term. Volunteers say the effort will take several months and thousands of man hours to complete. Joe Avery, Cayman 27. The DOE report puts the value of the damage in the range of $1.1 to $14 million. The report recommends government to implore on the corporate and social responsibility of the three major players, the Port Authority, Baden Shipping and Carnival Cruise Lines, this to secure $2 million to continue restoration of the site.